What's up everybody? It's Luke James, not the singer. If you're looking to get your music reviewed, you can hit up this email that's right here. But today I'm going to hit you up with my thoughts and opinions on this new album from Jay Electronica called A Written Testimony, which is actually a collaboration album with Jay-Z because he is featured on pretty much every damn song. Now, Jay Electronica is a rapper who's coming out of New Orleans, and while he hasn't put out too much music over the years, he's well known for some of his Lucy's, his mixtapes, and of course, Exhibit C produced by Just Blaze. Even to this day, I think that song is absolute fire. I love that song, and when I think of Jay Electronica at his best, that's what I come to. But unfortunately, you're not really going to get that on this album right here. So if you hold him to those types of standards, you might be a bit disappointed. And to be fair, where everyone was waiting for this for a decade, I don't think it would ever live up to the full standards, if you get what I'm saying. This album was kind of in the same vein of Dr. Dre's Detox, which didn't come out at all, where people were just waiting and waiting, and it almost became mythological. Like, was this shit ever going to happen? Would this exist? And yet here we are, a Jay Electronica album, although again, it's not a solo album. It is featuring Jay-Z on pretty much every song. Now, I never was on the Jay Electronica hype train, just to come out being honest from the jump, but I always did consider him to be a pretty good MC. It's just that with that lack of body of of work, I couldn't really put him up there as one of the greatest to ever do it. I've always seen people have him like in their top five and top ten, and to me, I just couldn't really grasp that because I think you need a little bit more. Although then again, it's all up to opinion and how you feel, but based by my standards, that's kind of how I felt about Jay Electronica. Pretty dope MC, but I needed much more. So now we do come to this project, and it kind of makes me wonder how much work went into all this because it is quite short, and it's even filled out with an old song of his called Shiny Suit Theory. I don't really have a problem with this song, it certainly is fine, but after waiting for 10 years or so to get this album, you're going to throw an old song on there too. That was just kind of a weird move to me and made me feel like they're just kind of rushing this shit together. Although I did hear something about 40 days and 40 nights putting this together. I don't know, that still seems pretty quick for an album. But anyway, we're going to get into this album right here. Everyone has been waiting on it. And even if you're like me and you're not a diehard Jay Electronica fan, I'm sure you were just as curious as I was because this was something that was mythological, as I said earlier. But it finally dropped. The hype beat are already foaming at the mouth saying that this is the album of the year, the best shit they ever heard, and an instant classic. But to me personally, I wasn't getting that at all, man. I do like how it's kind of a short and cohesive project, so it's not overloaded with filler. But then again, for such a short project that people waited on so long to get, you're going to get some sketchy mixing on here. Some of the production is very bland, like oatmeal in spots. Oatmeal with no sugar, no fucking honey in there, no nothing, just bland, flat oatmeal. And there's a heavy reliance on Jay-Z here, who I think really did most of the heavy lifting. Jay-Z snapped on 444, thought he absolutely killed that shit and really was staking his claim as one of the goats even further than he already has but at 50 years old man on this album here he's really delivering some great lines and really outshining Jay Electronic every time he shows up in my opinion like on the song Flux Capacitor where Hove delivers some of his best vires over this fun vocal sampled production he addresses people who called him a sellout for his NFL involvement he's getting at people who might front on their relationship when he passes trying to post up pictures and all that acting like they were close to Jay when they weren't and he even delivers some stellar wordplay that revolves around people wanting to turn him back into the old J, or OJ, as he says it. And this is tied in with the OJ Simpson stabbing and the OJ song Backstabbers. I will post the lyrics there so you can read it for yourself, but I thought that was incredibly dope. Really impressed with that. And as I said, man, Jay is 50 and still going hard. That's half of 100. Just think about that shit. Jay is really going in on this one. But I think he also stole the show on Ghost of Soldier Slim. You're getting some whimsical accordion lace production here. That was pretty cool. And this time, Jay-Z is delivering black black excellence bars, all about black people's perseverance and how even through Jim Crow and all that bullshit, we came through with the invention of soul food, making that out of garbage basically, and we also made soul music. So I like when Jay is on that black excellence shit, seems like he's getting a bit more conscious as he gets older, and Jay Electronica has some good lines on here as well. He has a pretty smooth performance, and I did like that opening Islamic line where he spits, if it come from me and Hove, consider it Quran, if it come from any of those, consider it Haram. Pretty dope line, but just to be clear, this is going to be a constant theme throughout here, and if you're not interested in religious themes and ideology and imagery, this might turn you off a bit, man. You're going to get Louis Farrakhan voice clips, constant references to Allah, religion, God, Jesus, and Nation of Islam, and it's not necessarily that I find it bothersome because this has always been a part of hip-hop. There have always been people who have spoken on their religion and expanded on it in interesting ways, tying in stories and just touching on the pain and suffering they've gone through, and they rely on God, you know, those sorts of things. 
things. But honestly here, I don't think he really made it that interesting. It kind of felt like he was just hammering us in the head with his religious beliefs and ideas at times. Maybe not like forcing it on us or anything like that, but you're just listening to these verses, and if you're not into all that stuff, I think you might be turned off a little bit, at least I was. It's just some of these chunks of verses kind of felt like they weren't overly focused in my opinion. That's just kind of how I feel about it. But hey, it is what it is. People have different opinions and I'm sure there's going to be a bit of backlash on this review because as I said, people are calling this album of the year, the best album ever, instant classic and shit like that. But anyway, it is what it is. I actually thought the most interesting religious based moment on here came from Jay-Z where on the never ending story, he calls out the bullshit of white Jesus and how that throws off some of the people around him. Him, like some of the older black folk around him who really are clinging to religion and God and Jesus and him saying these things is just blasphemous. Really like that part there. And you're getting some very calming stripped back production from Alchemist on this joint, which is one of the better beats on the album, which isn't really too surprising because Jay Electronica did a lot of the beats here. And as I said, I think the beats are something that kind of held it back. I really did think the rapping though was fine for the most part. I did mention how some of the content was a little bit boring and monotonous to me coming from Jay Electronica, but I thought the effortless flows and rhyme schemes were still there. I would have liked a bit more passion maybe from Jay Electronica because on some of these songs kind of sounds like he's just going through the motions. That's fine. But there weren't a lot of moments that were just grasping me and like blowing my mind. He didn't really catch me too much. And while you guys know that I'm an advocate of bars, like I always go hard for bars, I still need some damn good beats underneath those bars, man. And these beats were the biggest detriment to this album. The production throughout, I thought, was kind of flat at times. So not all the beats. There were a couple of beats that I liked. I kind of spoke on some of those earlier. But for a couple of examples, of the beats I didn't like. We have Universal Soldier. This one is kind of dull and plodding. You have Jay-Z on here rapping about Duck and Fed, some of that content you've got from him before. Jay Alec is on the Jesus Juice and A La Ale that he's on for most of the album. You're getting that on this song. And then with the song Ezekiel's Wheel, this shit doesn't really go anywhere to me in my opinion as far as the production goes. It just goes on and on. It kind of loops for like seven minutes. Nothing really interesting happening. At least nothing interesting enough to keep me engaged over that runtime. Then you get this bad hook from the dream where he's He's like, e that shit just was grating. I really didn't care for that. Although again, there are some pretty memorable moments on here as far as the bars go. Like when Jay Electronica is addressing the wait time for this album. So I did appreciate that honesty. He's sort of reflecting on different insecurities and issues that he's dealt with within himself. You know, the outside voices and all the things that go into dropping this album that people have been waiting for. I can only imagine the pressure that's on him. He actually addresses this again on the song The Blinding where he's stressing over whether or not rap is worth it or not. Everyone's going to look at your flaws. He sees flaws within himself. He's also saying how you put all this work in, you stress over it, then just to be critiqued by dumbasses like me. You know, it is what it is. That's what we do. We give our opinions like everyone else. I just happen to record mine and put them out there for people to get mad sometimes or agree with me. So that song was all right, though, The Blinding. I did like the bass on it. It has a nice beat switch up on it. The bass is thicker than Priya Price, which is cool. And it has a non-distinct Travis Scott hook. Pretty cool song, not amazing, and like most of the songs on here, I don't really see myself coming back to it, so it is what it is. Now one beat that definitely caught my attention comes on Fruits of the Spirit, where you might recognize the sample like I did. It comes from Talib Kweli's song Never Been In Love Before, which I think was produced by Just Blaze. If I'm wrong, I will put down below here what the correct answer is, but if I'm right, I'm gonna leave it, because I did a damn good job. But I like the way it was on Talib Kweli's song, just because it had a bit more punch to it, it was nice and bouncy. Here is kind of minimalistic and stripped back, but it still is a very soulful affair, so I appreciated that. Jay Electronica is just dropping one single verse where he's snapping like Thanos, delivering a bit of content in regards to the inaction regarding the Flint water crisis, as well as how ICE is ripping families apart. So there is some content and insight here. I'm not hating on all the content, I'm just saying some of the verses do feel like they get a bit all over the place, like he's free-flowing and trying to cover a lot of topics, which maybe he is because he's been gone for so long. And then of course you have all this padding with all this religious shit, some of it's kind of Hotepish, some of it you might not agree with, so not that you have to agree with everything an artist is saying, but sometimes you might be listening and be like, Oh, here we go with all this religious shit again. Just a matter of how you feel. It's kind of how I felt sometimes, but it is what it is. You guys can let me know in the comment section what you think, as always. But for me, I think it would be impossible for this album to live up to all the hype. I believe I said that earlier, but I just want to reinforce that as I dropped my 6.5 out of 10 rating. I didn't think this was bad. I didn't think this was amazing. I don't see myself coming back to it. And the reason I do have a higher points than I was going to give it is because when I did start going through some of the lyrics and content, I picked at some of the gems 
systems, although I still did have some issues with uh, some of the stuff that I already mentioned there. I just really wasn't sucked into Jay Electronica's performances on here, to be honest with you. I feel like Jay-Z really carried this shit. Like, if you took Jay-Z off this, I think this would have been much weaker. I will admit fully that I go hard for Jay-Z. Like, he might be my favorite artist of all time. I fuck with Jay-Z. He's always up there every time I talk about my personal goats. But I'm not just saying that as a stand. I'm just being honest with you, man. Jay Electronica sounds good on here. I would never say he's a bad MC. I don't think that. But there weren't enough moments where I was, like, fucking drawn in and enthralled and amazed by the shit he was saying. There was some of it there. But really, the best track in regards to that, like the song that really did hit me as far as Jay Electronica's bars, is All Praise Is Due To Allah. On this one, we're getting this very somber, weeping guitar production. Fits perfectly with the content, because Jay Electronica is on here pouring his heart out about lost loved ones, man. Very sorrowful moments on this track, as he opens up about fighting anxiety and tears as he's scrolling through the text messages that his mother sent to him. You know, she passed away, he's still reading these text messages, he kind of feels close. That was a really powerful moment. I think that the last track right there from Jay Electronica uh, delivered one of his better performances. I think his more laid back style fit this beat better. So I thought that was really dope. That hook that says, I got numbers in my phone that'll never ring again. That certainly will ring true to anyone who's lost somebody and then you see their number in the phone or you see the picture, you know, you have these memories that you kind of have to deal with. You cherish memories, but at the same time, they can haunt you and eat away at you. Powerful track, nice way to end the album. But yeah, man, that's how I feel. I think a lot of people are probably gonna like this better than me. I get it, like if you have been on the J Electronica hype train from the start, like you fuck with J Electronica, you love his music, you've been waiting for it, you've been excited, I'm not gonna hold it against you. Obviously, you're gonna be much happier with this one, even if it didn't live all the way up to your standards. I'm sure you were just happy to get it. But for me, this just confirmed how I was feeling about J Electronica. He's certainly a decent MC, but uh, I don't really consider him to be a personal goat to me. He wouldn't be high up on my top tier list of rappers. But you guys let me know down below how you feel. I'm sure the comments section might get a little bit funky. But that's all I got to say. Wash your hands. Keep battling that coronavirus. I hope everyone out there is okay doing the right thing. Hope you're not hoarding too much because other people out there need to make sure they have toilet paper and food and hand sanitizer and all these other things. Although, you could just wash your hands with soap. Like, I've seen some stores where all the hand sanitizer is gone, then all the soap is there. Like, what's wrong with people, man? You can wash your hands a lot too. That hand sanitizer is going to dry your damn hands out. You'll be out there looking like Mumra, just dry as fuck. Shout out to Thundercats. But hey, thank you for watching. Let me know how you feel down below. Make sure you do that good YouTube and social media stuff where you show me love and you show me lots of it, man. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.